In this video, we're going to give some further thought to sampling with replacement as opposed to sampling without replacement. We're going to firm up our understanding of the fact that whenever you're talking about sampling without replacement, you must know the size of the population. Whereas when sampling with replacement, the size of the population is completely irrelevant. In a large group of people, and notice I'm not specifying how large, I'm not specifying the size of the group. What we do know is that 75% of the members of the group are known to support a certain proposal and 25% oppose the proposal. Now, based on that information, which does not include the size of the group, if you talk to six people in the group, what is the probability that five of them will support the proposal? If you construe this as sampling with replacement, then you can use the independent trials formula because with replacement, it means every time you pull out somebody and talk to them, you put them back in the group so that you still have the full group. So no matter what size the group is, it still always has the case that uh, anytime you pick anybody out of the group to interview, it will always be the case that 75% of the members are known to support the proposal because you haven't eliminated anybody from the group. In this case, you can use the independent trials formula and think of each person you're talking to, think of success as being the person supports the proposal and failure as the uh, case when they don't support the proposal. So what you're talking about with six people is you're interviewing six people and asking what's the probability of five successes in six trials. So your independent trials formula says you can calculate the probability of six successes of five successes in six trial as just combinations of six things choosing five times your success probability to the power equal to the number of successes, your failure probability to the power equal to the number of failures, and you run that arithmetic and get approximately 0.356. Now, if we know the population size, we can alternately do a calculation based on sampling without replacement. So let's suppose that we know the population size. Let's suppose it's 200 people. And again, 75% of them are known to support a certain proposal. We're going to interview six of the people, this time six different people. So when you say you're interviewing six different people, uh, that's talking about sampling without replacement. Uh, if we're constrained to interview six different people, what is the probability that, that exactly five of them will support the proposal? So how do we approach this? We have 200 people. We're going to interview six. So let's first think through how many ways there are to pick which six people get interviewed. That's choosing six people from the 200 people. And it's just a combinations question. How many different ways can you choose six people from the 200 people available? Now, we also have to count the possibilities where five people support the proposal and one doesn't. It's the probability of that event that we're interested in. 75% of the members support the proposal, so that means 150 out of the 200. So the cases we're looking at are cases where five of the people interviewed come from the 150 who support the proposal, from that 75%. And one of the people interviewed comes from the 50 who oppose the proposal. So this product counts the number of ways to pick five who support the proposal and one who doesn't support the proposal. Multiplication principle says we multiply. And this counts the number of outcomes in the event whose probability we're trying to compute, the event where five support and one opposes. And we have to divide that by the total number of possible outcomes, which we've counted by this first combinations. The calculation we need to do is this division, number of cases that make up the event whose probability we're trying to compute, divided by the total number of cases. 
do the multiplication in the numerator, calculate out the denominator, very big numbers here, but it comes out to be approximately 0.3589. And I want you to notice that that's very, very close to the probability we get using independent trials formula for sampling without replacement. So how do you, how do you explain that? We've got a relatively large number of people in this case, 200. Now that's certainly not an infinite population, but it's relatively large compared to the sample size, which is six people we're going to talk to. So the point is, if you're sampling six people from out of 200, you're not likely to pick the same person twice anyway. So the chances of your getting duplicates in the sample that you're selecting is pretty small and that's why the probability comes out so close to what the probability would be if you were doing no replacement, sampling without replacement. So in, so, or another way of thinking about it, doing the counting by the combinations formula as is, as is required if you're doing sampling without replacement doesn't differ very much numerically from the independent trials formula, which is what the exact answer would be for sampling with replacement. Now let's think through the basically the same situation again, except cut way down on the population size. In the example we just did, we were assuming a population of 200 people. What if, we have, what if we're sampling from only 20 people? But still assuming that 75% of them support the proposal and 25% oppose. What's going, to come, what's going to happen in this case? Now when we're picking the people to interview, we're picking from only 20. So our sample of six people is being drawn from the 20 people that we have available under this scenario. So the number of possible outcomes is only the number of different ways to pick six people from 20, not from 200. And when we count the outcomes that would give us five supporter and one opponent, we're talking about how many ways to pick five supporters from the 15, 15 being 75% of the 20. From the 15 supporters of the proposal, we're drawing five of those, and we're looking at the cases where that means one is being interviewed from the five who oppose, so this would be the count for how to pick five who support and one who oppose. Multiply that together, together by the, according to the multiplication principle and divide by this total possible number of outcomes is going to give us our answer in this case. So in this case, the probability that our sample of six people includes exactly five who support and one who oppose involves smaller numbers. We're dividing this product by combinations of 20 things choosing six. The numbers are smaller. In this case, the probability works out to be 0.38738. So it's beginning to make some difference. This is, it's not really far away from what we got using independent trials, but it's off by a couple of spots in the second significant digits. So the point is, these two probabilities approximate each other very closely. These don't, primarily because the population size is smaller, which means there's more chance of getting duplicate people in the sample if you're sampling uh, with replacement. So it makes it more different than sampling from uh, sampling without replacement than the first case did. Let's push it a little bit further. Let's push it to the case where the population has only 12 people in it. If we have only 12 and we're interviewing six and we're doing it with replacement, then it's getting more likely that we would have some repetition, isn't it? If we interview six, what's the probability that exactly five will support if we're working with a population of only 12? So to carry out this case, we think about the six we're interviewing as coming from the 12 in the population. So there are this many possibilities for which six get interviewed. 
and the cases that produce five who support, let's see, 75% of the members are known to support the proposal. So with 12 in the population, in the whole group, that means nine of them would be supporters and three would be opponents. So what we're talking about is getting five of the nine supporters and one of the three opponents. So we need to divide this product by the total number of possibilities. When we do this arithmetic, dividing the number of outcomes where there are five supporters and one opponent divided by the total number of outcomes, we're working with these numbers right here and the calcula calculation comes out to be 0 0.40909, which is drifting a little further yet away from what the independent trials formula would determine as the uh, probability of that happening if we were sampling with replacement. And before we leave this chain of calculations, let's, let's push it just a little bit further. What if we push the population size all the way down to eight? So we now have eight people. We're interviewing six of them. What's the probability that exactly five will support the proposal? In all the cases we're talking about, we're assuming 75% of the members are known to be supporters. So if we're reducing the whole group down to size eight, for 75% to be supporters means six of them. So we're going to interview six. The total number of possibilities would be how many ways we can choose the six to be interviewed from the eight who are available. The case we're interested in where we get five supporters and one opponent would be cases where we choose five people from the six the 75% who do support, and one from the two who do not support. So our calculation now is to count the total possibilities. We're talking about six, a, a sample of size six drawn from the population of size eight, 28 possible outcomes. Counting the outcomes where we get five of the six supporters and one of the two opponents is six times two is 12. Divide 0.42857. And notice that's a little further yet from what the independent trial gives than we had in the previous case. And it's because the population size has shrunk some more. So what I want you to take out of this is keep in mind, anytime you're doing independent trials, anytime you're using the independent trials formula, you're assuming that the trials really are independent of each other. And the reason, and remember what that means is that with each trial, the probability stays the same. So in this particular survey, it means that every time you talk to a person, there's a 75% chance that they're a supporter of the proposal. And see, that probability would be changing if you were removing people as you sample them so that the makeup of the population changes during the sampling process. So keep in mind that anytime you're using the independent trials formula, you are inherently treating it as sampling without replacement. It doesn't make much difference numerically if you're talking about a large population size in compar compared to the sample size. I mean, think about going out and taking a survey in North Carolina, survey 100 people to find out what they think about something. Uh, if you talk to 100 people in North Carolina, even if you paid no attention to whether you were getting duplicates or not, it's highly unlikely you would get any because the population is so big impaired, compared to the number of people you're talking to. Uh, so the numerical effect of treating it as sampling with or without replacement doesn't have much practical numerical significance if you're dealing with a large population size compared to the sample size. But see, we push this to the extreme so that there's not really much difference in the population size and the sample size. The closer together the two get, then the more effect that has, the more difference it makes in whether you're going to talk about sampling with replacement or sampling without replacement.